One of the most important and exciting new feature additions to 3D Coat 2024 is layer masks and clipping masks. 3D Coat has long had the ability to mask layers, but we got a lot of requests over the years for something that would be functionally similar to and compatible with Photoshop masks. Let's explore them by turning our attention to the lower right portion of the interface in the layer panel. Before we begin, I should first point out that we have also added color image thumbnails, also much like those you find in Photoshop. They correspond to the UV map that is visible in the 2D texture editor. For example, if this layer has color information stored on this UV map, then it will be reflected in the thumbnail image. Conversely, you can see some of the other layers do not have any color pixels in their image thumbnails currently. That is because they have color painted on other UV maps. All right, so I'll go back to map one. Now let's proceed to explore layer masks. What we want to do to create one would be the same way we would in Photoshop, and that is to select the layer that we want to create a mask on. Then click on the layer mask icon at the bottom of the layer panel. We can now see the newly created mask thumbnail on the layer. If we want to begin painting on this mask, we can click on this thumbnail just as we would in Photoshop. And now I'm ready to begin painting my mask either in the 2D texture editor or in the 3D viewport on the model itself. I can click on the foreground swatch in order to pick a black color, or I can pick from the color swatches panel. I'll leave the panel here in the viewport, then click on the black color swatch, and begin painting my mask. What I'm seeing here is the white paint beneath this layer being exposed as I paint the mask. Let me switch to white. I can paint it back. Okay, let me try something different here. Maybe this part. I'll hit the E key to bring the E panel to me. And uh, let's use the polygonal lasso tool. All right, so now that we have this created, if we want this to be a permanent change, just as in Photoshop, we could right click and choose to apply mask and blending. It essentially applies or bakes in the mask and then discards the thumbnail. Let's now test and see how compatible this is with Photoshop mask by quickly exporting our layers over to Photoshop. From the edit menu, we can edit all layers in external editor. I have a hotkey assigned to it, so I can just quickly hit that hotkey and then choose which UV map I want to work with. It may take a few seconds for it to process. If it's not already open, it will open Photoshop and it will bring it to the forefront. Okay, so here are all of our layers. As you can see, these are all blanked out because, again, these layers belong to a different UV map. The layers that have some pixels on them are the ones that have pixels applied to the map 01 UV map. And indeed, we can now see our layer mask created in 3D Coat present here in Photoshop. Let's now click on the layer mask thumbnail, and I can see the changes that we made here. So if I want, I can switch to white and remove those mask pixels. I'll now switch my color to black. And so, yeah, I will just brush here. Just a simple test. And uh, I can also do the same here. Now I can Simply hit Control S to save, then go back to 3D Coat and wait for it to update. Okay, and so we can see our changes here. 
but also here as well. Now let's do a quick test of the layer mask that came with Photoshop and see if it works properly in 3D Coat. So again, I will choose white. If I want, I can come over to the 2D Texture Editor and remove the mask here instead. You can see the change in real time here in the viewport. And I can do the same here as well. All right, let's switch gears now by looking at clipping mask. And again, it works very similar to what you may already know in Photoshop. What I want to do is use this map and clip a portion of it out with a layer that lies beneath it in the stack. Okay, so what I need to do is select the layer beneath it and I'll create a new layer here. And then just paint whatever shape that I want to create and use that as a clipping mask. So let's switch to an orthographic view. I can also use my number keys to toggle into different views or utilize the new viewport and navigation gizmo. But yeah, I'll hit the five key. I'm now in orthographic view. And if I want to look down the Y axis in order to be in a top view, I can click on the little Y letter or widget. So I'm gonna right click outside the object and drag to the right, zoom in, middle mouse click to pan. And I will hit the E key to bring the E panel to me and I'm gonna choose rectangular lasso. And when I do that, you'll notice the edge radius parameter here beneath it. And I can adjust that. I can also adjust it on the fly by holding down the R key and it will allow me to round the edges interactively. But I have already preset the radius value that I want in the e-panel. And I want to make five instances of this shape as I create it. So I'll hit five, drag it out and release. I'll also hit the E key and choose a circle. Okay, so I think that's good. I can release. Again, let's say I wanted to use whatever shapes that I've made to clip out a portion of the layer above it. I would need to select the layer above, right click and choose Create Clipping Mask. And you see the icon here indicating this mask has been clipped by the layer beneath it. Now, if I want to release that, I can come back after right clicking the layer and then choose release clipping mask. And that's a brief overview of layer mask and clip mask in 3D Coat 2024. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.